This test can only help you. Did you know it's perfectly legal for the police to lie to you? Let's look at some of these lies and how you can protect yourself. I'm attorney Andrew Flushi, and this channel is about protecting your rights and defending your freedom. The police have a job to do. It's to investigate crime and frankly, to try to secure convictions. And if they think you've committed a crime, they may in fact lie to you to try to get you to admit to things. They do it routinely and you need to be prepared how to deal with these lies. Let's look at some lies that may come your way. This test can only help you. If the officer is flashing a breath test in your face and saying that you are gonna go to jail if you don't take the test, that is a lie. The test absolutely can and will hurt you. If you take any test on the side of the road in a DUI investigation, those tests can and will be used against you in court to determine if the officer has probable cause to arrest you for DUI. So a lot of times the officers will say, oh, this handheld test can only help you if you take it. It's just between you and me, it doesn't go to court. Those are all lies along the same lines. Basically, they're trying to convince you to take take the test that they know full well they will use in court to try to prove that they had a good reason to arrest you. There's a tiny kernel of truth in this lie in that in Virginia, at least, the handheld breath test cannot be used to prove in fact that you were intoxicated, but that's not, the, not what they need it for. They need it to prove that they had a good reason to arrest you in the first place. Once you're arrested, then they take you to the station to do the real breath test or they take you to the hospital to draw blood and that's how they prove your actual intoxication. So this test can only help you is flat out a lie. I can't help you if you won't talk to me. This is another flat out lie the police use to try to get you to open up and talk to them. They're trying to make it out like they're on your side or they're your friend and they're trying to help you. And if you only tell them what happened, they can try to help you with that information. In reality, they're looking to see if you're guilty of something. They're looking to see if they can arrest you for something. And if you open up and tell them what happened, they absolutely can and will use it against you to arrest you. So the idea that if you talk to them and tell them what happened, they're gonna help you with it is also a lie. We already know what happened. In some cases, they may in fact already know everything. And in that case, it may seem like it doesn't matter if you talk, you're already hosed. Well, keep in mind there are rules of evidence. There are different defenses that could be used in your favor. If you talk, that's going to be an admission or a confession that will be used against you in court. And so even if some of the other evidence the police have is ultimately not admissible, if you confess to the crime, now that's going to be admissible. And so it's going to make their case stronger. So even if it's true that they do know what happened, you don't want to confess unless you're getting some kind of consideration out of it. And that's the only, something you would need to talk with your attorney about. Don't trust the police that they're going to try to help you with the information. That they already know what happened, so you might as well just tell them. Only confide in your attorney, and your attorney can maybe work out some consideration for the information you may want to provide. But in many cases, the police don't already know what happened. Maybe they know some things, maybe they have a hunch or a guess, but they can't a lot of times prove beyond a reasonable doubt in court what happened without statements or admissions from you. If you keep your mouth shut, you'll have a much better chance of staying on the correct side of the prison wall. Now's your chance to tell me your side of the story. False. Your chance to tell your side of the story if you and your attorney decide it's in your best interest is in court in front of the judge or the jury. That's the time to tell your side of the story. You'll have a day, you'll have a chance to defend yourself, to put on evidence, to testify. If you choose, that's when you get to tell your side of the story and defend yourself. If the police are interrogating you and using this argument against you to get you to talk and tell them what happened, they're trying to play on that human emotion where we all become defensive. Anytime someone accuses us of something, we wanna become defensive and we wanna say, well, well, maybe I was there, but I didn't do what you're claiming I did. Now you've just admitted that you were in the location of the crime. That's one piece of the puzzle they needed to put, put together. If you had kept your mouth shut and remained silent, then they wouldn't have that information against you. The whole idea that in the interrogation room or on the side of the road is your time to tell your side of the story, that's just flat out wrong. That is not the time to argue the case. That's the time when the officers are collecting evidence against you. They're trying to figure out what happened and they're trying to determine if you're gonna be charged with a crime. Now you may think, well, if I just tell them and you know I'm innocent and they, they won't charge me with anything, the odds are pretty strong that they actually will. If you remain silent, you have a much better chance of defending yourself in the long run if they do charge you with something. And then you can talk with your attorney about what your side of the story is and then you can decide together if you're going to present that in court via your testimony or via other evidence. I'll let the judge know you were cooperative. This one is sort of a half truth. Frankly, a lot of officers really will let the judge know if you're polite and cooperative with them. It's one of the key questions we ask a lot of times in traffic cases, you know, did, did my client pull over right away? Were they cooperative? Did they cause you any havoc? And that can, can matter to a judge. But frankly, it doesn't matter as far as giving you extra consideration. Being polite and cooperative doesn't, is not a get out of jail free card. 
being a jerk is a go to jail card in some cases. So being super cooperative with the officer doesn't necessarily get you anything extra. It may prevent extra punishments in your case. But the other thing is the, the officer in many cases doesn't have a lot of discretion. Once they've written the ticket, once they've charged you with a crime, it's really not in their hands. So even if they truly think that you were being honest and you, you were forthcoming with them and they appreciate that, they may not have any control over whether or not you're ultimately charged with a crime. They may not have any control over what happens with the ultimate disposition of the case. They might have put in their two cents with the prosecutor or with the judge, but ultimately it's not their decision usually once the charging process begins. They may intend to say, yes, you were polite and cooperative with them, but it may not really get you much of any place. I would say you should not be rude to officers and you should definitely be polite, but that doesn't mean you have to answer their questions and that doesn't mean you have to perform voluntary tests for them. To learn more about how the police can lie, manipulate you into convicting yourself, check out my next video on say. I'll see you over there. And remember, don't talk to the police.